Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. Today I'm going to introduce you to my Easy V bag and I'm actually having this in progress and I'm going to show you how to do this and then I'm going to finish this on camera with you today. So let's get started today. This is a repeat pattern. It's a V stitch that we have that's using front post uh, double crochets in order to create the lines. You need three balls of Karen cotton cakes in order to play and a four millimeter size G crochet hook. The free pattern is available. Go and look at the more information of this video and I will have all the final details available there because I'm literally designing and filming on the go. So without further ado let's uh, start reviewing this. Let's uh, talk about the multiples and let's begin. So this is actually version number two. I actually started this and I, the bag was much smaller and I realized it's kind of too small for practical use so I actually frogged it and brought it back to what I wanted to for a larger size. So what we have here is that you're seeing it's 12 inches tall and it's about 12 inches uh, in the in the width maybe a little bit more. What we have it's a repeat of six. So it's multiples of six. There's no plus anything because what we're gonna do is we're gonna con uh, do a continuous round and then just work our way up. Once I get you to the third round it's the same round all the way all the way to the top. So there's rounds four through 27 which takes you to the top and then what we're going to do then on camera is that I'm gonna take you even further. I've got plans to do one row to even this off and then three rows then to balance it and then we've got the handles and then we're gonna come back to the base here to finalize that off and seal the deal. So right now it's just a continuous tube. So if you want to change the size to multiples of six and I'll tell you that and we're gonna get started next. So let's begin. We're going to create a slip knot and I need you to chain 126. So you can do that or you can just chain a multiples of six if you would like to change the size. I'm only gonna do a small sample because I'm gonna work on the big one with you once we get there. So we just go one, two, three, four, five, six and then do another six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. You're gonna go to 126 for me. What I would do after you get a certain amount done, put the last chain onto the hook here and then just continue along. So I got one, two, three, four, five, six and one, two, three, four, five, and six and that's as far as I'm gonna go because I'm going to show you the repeats on this because it's actually a really easy thing. Once you get 126 on here just yarn over, pull through and through and then we're going to begin then going all the way around in the back loops of the chain to start. To start the first round we're going to chain up one and in the same one that you did the join what I want you to do is that I want you to in the back hump of the chain I want you to single crochet. So the first one is always a little bit awkward because it's nice and tight in there which is not a big deal. You don't want anything loose and you're going to single crochet in the back hump of the chain and then you're just gonna move across the back humps of every one of the chains and single crochet yourself all the way around and you'll do that. So you should end up with 126 of these stitches all the way around. Counting is kind of important but you can always fake it too if you're off by one or two at the very end. Of course if you don't really want to be if it's a bag but uh, you know what you gotta do what you gotta do. So single crochet all the way around. So I'm just coming up all the way around and coming into my last stitch and then I'm just going to join to the first one. So just right to the top of the first single crochet that you started with. Make sure that there is no weird twist to it. So it's like a conveyor belt. Just make sure it's like a make sure it's not twisting in any weird way. Now we're going to begin round number two and this is going to set us up so that we can start doing that fabulous work that you see on the back. So let's do that next. So of course your ring would be bigger but you're going to chain up three which counts as a double crochet this time around and what you wanna do is you wanna skip the next two and I want you to go to the third one over and I want you to double crochet twice. So let's count these. So one and two and then throw in a chain one and then double crochet two more times into that same one. So it's basically two double crochet, chain one, two double crochet and it's kind of like your V stitch, right? So once you get that in you're going to skip two and double crochet into the third one over. So you're seeing there's no texture yet. That's gonna be coming into the next round. So we're not gonna start that so far. So skip the next two and go to the third and put in two double crochets followed by a chain one and two double crochet into the same one and there is another v-stitch for you. So then you're going to skip two, one, two and go to the third and double crochet. 
and you're going to do that all the way around so you'll end up with that kind of configuration. So please do that all the way around and I'll see you at the end of your round. So eventually you're gonna come all the way back around. I'm just putting in my V stitch. My counts are correct. I did verify off camera but they should have been anyway <laughs> even if I hadn't tested that off camera. And so there's my final V stitch and I'm gonna skip the final two and I'm going to slip stitch into the top of the first chain three. So slip in there and that, that will balance everything back out. So you should have what appears to be a V and then these double crochets that separate them. And then we're gonna move on to round number three which is the repeat all the way to round number 27. So let's get after it. Let's go. We're going to chain two. So one and two. Does not count as anything. That's a builder. And right in this chain three is where I want you to apply your first front post double crochet. So wrap that hook going around the post. So from the side and out the other side. Pull through and pull through two and two. So it's a front post double crochet. You're going to do a V stitch in this chain one space. So every chain one space is gonna have these V stitches now going all the way up to round number 27. So that's two double crochet, chain one, two double crochet and now that you've established the stitch work you can turn on the TV and enjoy your evening. So now you're going to have your next double crochet you see there. So that's gonna be a front post double crochet. So wrap and the side to side, pull through, pull through two and two. Okay, so that gives you the ribbing that you can start seeing happening and now you're gonna V-stitch in the middle of the chain one space of the V that's in below. So two double crochet, chain one, two double crochet. And then you're going to V or front post double crochet in this double crochet that's there. So these are really easy to be able to maintain. So the V-stitch in the middle of the next one. Once I got myself established, literally you turned on the TV, watched a couple episodes of a TV show and you know you're good to go. So it really did not take me long to make this because the, there's really no thinking power to it. So wrapping the hook, front post double crochet in the next double crochet that you see. So this is the final V that you have. So you're going to double crochet. So in your case it'll be much bigger obviously. Um, but in my case it's small so I'm kind of making a little wristband I guess. Wasn't my intention but it seems to be what's happening. So you've already started off and by chaining two which counted as nothing you have a front post double crochet. So I want you to join to the front post double crochet. So skip that chain two. It's just a builder. And it pretty much hides behind the stitch. So now this is, uh, that was round number three. So to restart round number three again all the way to 27. So we're, this is technically number four. You're going to chain two counts as nothing and you want a front post double crochet around the other front post double crochet that's now there. Just like that. Okay and then what you're going to do then is that you are going to um, just V-stitch in the next chain one space. So let's try that again. Sorry I was looking off camera for a second. So what I do is that I've designed this pattern. I write down my notes and then I go to my computer and I type the notes in. So I was kind of looking away. I think I might have made a mistake on my pattern there. So I'll adjust that when I get off today. So V-stitch and then a front post double crochet around the other front post double crochet. So that's all you gotta do and these things will line right up when you see it. So when you're looking at it from this perspective they'll go right up and so there's 27 rows completely all the way from one to 27. So I want you to continually do that and it's about 12 inches tall. Of course you can make it longer or bigger. Just make sure that are longer or smaller. Um, you will change your yarn quantities though if you make it bigger. So that's completely up to you and your creative choice. So once you get your 27 rows done completely just like you see you're gonna continue. So don't fasten off. I did fasten off. I wasn't sure my direction on my design so I fastened off and I'm just rejoining the yarn now. So you will not have that issue. So what you wanna do is you wanna start off and you immediately chain three which counts as a double crochet. And what we're going to do is that we're going to start creating a flat edge on the top. So the next double crochet will be a half double crochet. Okay. And then the next three in a row which will be this double crochet, this chain one space and the next double crochet will each be a single crochet. So the last double crochet that's leaning over in the V stitch is going to be a half double crochet and then finally this one here will be 
a double crochet. So let's repeat that again. See how that flattened off? So we wanna do it again. So I'm just gonna drop the stragglers to the back. So the first one will be a half double crochet. The next three will be singles. So one and then the uh, chain one space will have one and then the next one will have one. The last one in the V stitch will be a half double crochet and then you're back here again and it's double crochet. So please do that same thing going all the way around. So I'm coming up all the way back around just following the pattern as I showed you. And the last one will be a half double crochet because you started with the chain three which counts as a double crochet. So now rounds number two through four which is three rounds is all gonna be the same is that chain one and then single crochet into each of the stitches going all the way around. So what I want you to do is do that and do these uh, additional three rounds of, of single crochet and then we're gonna uh, meet you back here. We're gonna fasten off and then we're gonna turn the bag the other way upside down, finish off the bottom and then we're gonna continue then with the straps after that. So do your three rounds of single crochet and then fasten off and I'll see you at the end of that. Okay, so we come to the end of the three rounds. So this is it. This is the end of your story my friend. So what I want you to do is cut an extra long yarn tail and you're going to use that to be able to weave in your ends. So just pull that loop through and just create your tapestry needle. You know this is a bag you wanna be looking all good and fabulous and you don't want any tails hanging out of your bag because as crocheters that's the first thing we look for is loose tails. <laughs> oh my god. So we're just going to take the um, tapestry needle and we're going to just sink it in behind the stitches. So go on the inside of the bag. I'm still chuckling to myself over loose tails. Um, this is a family channel my friends. So coming through <laughs> and we're gonna go through one time and we're gonna go through the second time and what did they say about the third time? Yes that's right third time is a charm. So we're gonna come back the third time and remember a project can never stretch in three different directions at the same time. So basically you weave it in and out three times. You can cut it right down to the project and you should never ever have to worry about that falling out. I always give this as a recommendation. I had a friend uh, tell me that uh, many years ago and honestly especially if you're doing kids projects you don't want things to fall out on you. So now that we got the top of our band we're gonna flip our bag upside down and we're gonna go back. You kinda see that it has like a bucket of chicken kinda look. So let me just back out the camera a little bit. It's, I don't know if I planned it that way but it's kinda got like this uh, wedging look which I think is kinda neat so maybe I should call it the easy bucket V bag or something. <laughs> so let's turn up the or turn up to the bottom of the bag. So let's turn it on over. Let's find where we started and what I want you to do is that we're gonna do two rounds. We're gonna do the first round of single crochet and then we're gonna do the second round of just uh, being able to do a decrease and then we're gonna whip stitch it together, be done with that, get our straps, attach the straps and we're good to go. So without further ado, let me get my yarn ready and let's start the base of the bag. So we've already flipped our bag upside down. We're gonna take our yarn, create a slip knot and you're going to do that for extra security. It's the base of the bag so you want everything nice and tight. So what we're going to do is that the bottom edge is already flat and remember that we started off with single crochet in the round. So it's everything is gonna be nice and stable for you. So let's do another round of single crochet because you haven't had enough of it yet. <laughs> and chain one and single crochet in the same one that you did the join. And I want you just to work your way around the base of the bag doing one single crochet into each of the stitches going all the way around. No big deal, right? So if you know how to single crochet, this is an easy bag. That's why it's called the easy V bag here. So just single crochet all the way around and when I come back we'll just uh, just uh, recap again and then we're gonna do a decrease round and then show you how to sew the base of the bag together. So we're coming all the way back around and what we just need to do is slip stitch to the top of the or to the beginning single crochet that we started with. Now we're going to do a decrease round. We're only gonna do it one time and then we're going to fasten off and we're gonna leave an extra long tail in order for you to have the sewing. So to do that we're going to chain up one and in the first two we're going to do a single crochet one and two and then the next two is gonna be a single crochet two together. So what I need you to do is that you need to go in, pull through and then go into the next one and pull through and you got three loops on your hook you're going to pull through all three loops. That's a single crochet two together. So the next two will be by themselves. So single crochet, single crochet and then the next two together. So in, pull through, in, pull through and then pull through uh, all three loops. So I want you to do that all the way around and I'll meet you at the end of this round and then when we go to fasten off we're gonna leave an extra long tail so we can whip stitch this together at the base of the bag. So we're gonna come all the way back around and the last two will be two single crochet together 
and then we're going to join to the top of the first single crochet that you started with. Now I want you to leave an extra long yarn tail here so that you can use that to whip stitch this together. So then I want you to cut it and then using your crochet hook pull up on it and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip this upside down so it's easier for me to see. I'm also gonna move it so that the strand is on the one side of the project. So now that I have it positioned like this what I want to do is I wanna flip the bag inside out and I wanna get that yarn strand that I had and pull it forward. So okay so I wanna put it on the side and when we whip stitch it creates a lump. So this lump will be on the inside of the bag. So if you actually whip stitch and it's the good side you'll have a lump on the outside of the bag which nobody wants a lumpy bag. <laughs> so let's continue. Uh, so no lumpy bags today. Let's put our yarn strand on a tapestry needle and let's continue. So now that we have this we're gonna match our stitches. So come directly across the road into the one panel and then go back into the other panel across. This is called a whip stitch when you do it like this. And you're just basically matching the stitches. So advance one stitch on the one side, advance one stitch on the other and just go across. Pull it nice and tight. This is cotton yarn so it's got quite a bit of strength to it. So you're gonna pull and you're gonna push it through and match. What I want you to do is go all the way across. I'll see you at the end of this uh, crossing and then I'll show you how to fasten this off. Make sure you do pull it tight once in a while and just make sure there's no slack because you'll have things fall out of the bottom of your bag which nobody really wants. So now just whip stitch my way all the way across and I wanna just tie a little quick little knot here right at the end and I'm going to show you how to weave in the ends. Now remember how I showed you that going back and forth is a charm? We're gonna do back and forth here as well. Just, just trap it into a little knot. It just helps to secure it a little bit better. So now all I'm just going to do is that I'm just going to weave it through keep it on this side of the fiber so I don't want you to see your hook on the good side. When you go to flip this in the other direction you should never see the strand going across. So go back and forth a total of three times and then you can safely cut that down and get that out of your face. So what we want to do is now that I got three times I can cut it right down into the project. This is the inside. I want you to go through the bag now that, now that you see the inside of the bag you would have had to change your, your um, colors a little bit because you would have ran out of yarn. So anywhere that you see that there might be some weaving and tails either weave them in and if you took a, did a good job at the time you can safely just be cutthroat and just take it right out. So let's turn our bag the way that we should and now let's take a look and see what it looks like at the base of the bag because I haven't done that yet. Ooh look at that. Look at that. Isn't that just fabulous? I love happy accidents. <laughs> so there we go and so that's what the base of the bag looks like here. Uh, nice and solid and then you can just stretch it out and just weave it in. Like not weave it in but just stretch it out. So let's uh, get now and let's start doing the handles. So we need to make two handles you see here. What they are is five rows, okay, five rows of single crochet and then the sixth row what we do is we sandwich it up and single crochet our way all the way across which creates a nice gripping handle which is not too obscene in your hands like it's not too big. So let's uh, begin to do that. So you have to only chain 100. You have to do two of these. I've got them already done but I'll show you how that's done and then we're gonna continue then to sew that to the project. So let's grab our four millimeter size G crochet hook in order to play. So let's get our slip knot ready and let's zoom in and let's get after it. So I want you to chain a total of 100. I'm not gonna do 100 because I've already got it done. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. So you're gonna have all the way to 100. I want you to turn it over and get the back hump of the chain and single crochet yourself all the way across. You will have the most perfect edge if you do it all the, all the way like that. The only product that that does not ever work on is Bernat Blanket. When you turn it over to do that it creates a gapping space because the yarn is so thick. But that is my standard technique of turning it over and getting the back chain. And actually I find with myself as a kid is that I can never get that chain to look right and when you go in the back hump just like that it literally creates the most perfect um, um, first row ever and because you never have a row that kind of looks out of place. So that was row number one out of five. Turn your work and now this is two. So chain up one 
and single crochet yourself all the way across and go right to the very end. So this is row number two. Obviously it will take you longer to get across. So you've got a hundred stitches. I only have like nine at this time. So how did I know I had nine without really having to count? Well when you crochet a chain and you go second chain from the hook. So if I crocheted a 100 and I go second chain from the hook that means I'll have 99 when you have to eliminate one stitch out or one chain. So turn your work. Let's do row number three. Just continuing to go across. I kind of like this um, part of the project itself. You can sit in front of the TV not really have to worry about too much. Um, if you're a person that can watch TV and look away a lot um, the handles are really quite easy to be able to, to master. So we're gonna turn our work and go for row number four. It's almost like a tango isn't it? Do you remember Fred Flintstone doing the tango? I always remember the music from that. Okay, so this is uh, row number four that we're about to finish. Turn our work, go for row number five. So this is the final row. So just continuing to go. So what I want to do then after I get row number five done, we want to sandwich this in half and create a tube shape like that. I really don't like crocheting small little mini tubes, but I like doing it like this where I can just do my rows back and forth and then fold it. It's a lot easier. It's less headache too. So what I want you to do is sink your hook into the first stitch and then fold it up and get the matching stitch on the other side and pull it together. Get your, your straggler and pull it through and then single crochet. So advance one stitch on the one side and advance the next stitch on the other side and put it together. And you're just gonna single crochet yourself all the way down and you're seeing that you're creating a tube like shape by doing so. So please do that all the way down and you can leave an extra long yarn tail at the end of this one because you can use that then to sew it to the project which we'll be doing next. So eventually you get here you can leave an extra long yarn strand and then what we're gonna do is pull down the project again and we're gonna start then marking it out where we want it and then we're going to sew it to the bag itself. So I'm gonna give you some pieces of advice. See how we use brown up here? I would recommend saving a same color that you have out of your Karen cake. So what I have is that I'm almost running out of that brown. So I wanna use that because I wanna sew my handles to this. But if I'm using the wrong color then it's gonna be very obvious. So what I wanna do is that I want to use the same brown that you see here so that when we go through the project and come on this side that you really won't notice it there. So what I want to do is create a, a bit of a yarn strand here and I need a total of four of those and then um, what we're going to do then from that point is that we're gonna mark where we want these on the bag. I'm recommending three and a half inches from the edge in order to um, secure that in and again you can decide what's uh, good for you. I, I find most of the yarn inspirations patterns they always say just kind of look at the photo and, and put it out but what I like to do for myself is that I like to put down my hand and so use my hand assuming that they're both the same size. I don't know if they are or not but and then I would say okay this is where I want the handle and then I put my hand on the other side and say that's where I want my handle and that's where we're gonna go. So when I come back I'm gonna have some stitch markers here and then we're going to show you how to put those on. Okay so let's put on our stitch marker. So here's the base. It's nice and folded in half so make sure this is nice and flat and come to the top. Get four stitch markers and you can either do a measurement if you feel more comfortable. I'm gonna use my hand. It's about three and a half inches and I'm going to mark the first stitch like that. Then gonna take the, the stitch marker and pull it through and through and that will mark where one handle is. Then I wanna do the other side too. So just mark it and if you think it's too far apart now's the time to move it before you sew anything together right? So I'm doing the one side just like this and now what about the other side? So what I would do is flip up the other side and just look straight across to where it is and then get the other one. So why measure twice right? Sometimes when you measure <laughs> the tape measure lies to you. We all know that's true. I know the way scale lies to me all the time. <laughs> so, so here we go and we're marking our stitches. So what we're going to do is that I'm going to show you how to attach a strap 
and then what you wanna do is you wanna flip this up forward and attach your strap looking at it from this perspective. You're gonna trap, uh, put your strap on and then you're going to turn it over and then attach the other strap to the other location that you see. Because you've now got your stitch markers in, you're, you're comfortable to, with being able to flip it up either way. So let's attach our handle. So you'll notice that the single crochet ridge is right here. So you want to lay it down and I would go about an inch. My thumb is about an inch. I used to take engineering in um, college and they would tell you to measure some body parts so that you have a, <laughs> so you have a measurement. So I know my, my thumb one section is an inch. So um, there we go. So I wanna lay it down and I want to have it come up and over so that it's not twisting in any weird way and then the other side is gonna come down on the other side here. But I'm only gonna concentrate on the one side. I'm gonna get my yarn strand ready and then I'm going to show you how to attach. Okay, so we're gonna just take a measurement and now if you kinda look at it, if you kinda follow it, you can see that there's three rounds here of single crochets. I'm gonna go down to where I attached it here. So I'm going to go, I'm using the same color that you have and I'm gonna go in the outside and I'm just gonna do the slip knot here and I'm gonna come back and I'm just gonna loop that stitch, that, that uh, slip knot over it so that it will lock it into position like that. So now what I'm gonna do is rotate around. So I'm gonna go up and then over, down and then back across and then attach in the middle. And so it's just a, a great way of doing it. Now let's turn it over and see if this is really that obvious in the back. See, it's not. So if you use the same kind of color, it works out uh, really great for you. You can take off that stitch marker at any time. So what I want you to do is uh, just fasten this on. You're gonna do the same thing with all four of them, uh, of the straps. And what I'll do is that I'll meet you at the end of attaching the strap. So now that I've attached it, what I want to do is just kind of have a little tie on the other side. So on the back side of it here. That's why I'm having you look at this side. It's more important to secure everything in. And then just like I showed you before, back and forth a total of three times. So one, two and three and what I would do after you get this one in just refeed this starting strand here on it and just drag it through and so that it can be really well hidden and then what you're going to do is you're gonna do the same thing so follow the strap make sure it's not twisted at all and then attach it to the other side. Once you get that done flip the bag over and then access this this one's here and attach. So I'm gonna leave that with you. I'm gonna throw this through a darning needle now and then I will see you at the end of this. So here's the conclusion of my bag. I got my bottom sewed. I now have my straps on. You can see obviously that there's two of them. They're attached to the inside but look, if you use the same color as these top bands, look they're barely noticeable that they're even there. I can even turn it over with confidence because um, that is pretty awesome. So now this is good to go. Please enjoy my new bag. This is called the Easy V um, bag and it's really awesome. Lots of texture. Now if it were me and I were you, I would consider lining this bag and then you would have the even more perfect bag than it already is. But that's it for now. So until next time, it's Mikey on behalf of Yarn Inspirations as well as the Crochet Crowd.com. We'll see you again real soon. Bye bye.